Game Builder Studio. Now let's set up the hero character. I'm going to drag in the hero sprite sheet. Go to the sprite sheet renderer and change to the first flying frame. Now I want this thing to have a collision spatial on it because the hero is going to need to collide with the food and the shipped items. So what I'm what I'm also going to do now is turn off the gravity because we this this character is not going to have any gravity, and this whole this whole scene won't. And I'm going to change the collision body type or the collision spatial body type to kinematic. There are three different types. Dynamic is fully simulated with gravity. Kinematic is uh, the type that can still interact with objects in the world, but it, it does not, it's not affected by uh, gravity or simulations. And static is pretty much non-movable. It's, it's an object that just, um, it, it can just be used for um, uh, notifications, for example collision notifications. Now I want this to be a sensor. I don't want the hero character to actually bounce off of anything or um, or be affected by collision. So I'm going to turn it into a sensor by checking this box here. Now let me set the registration point on this guy on the renderer. I believe it was 8240. All right, and I'll just use the collision editor quick, delete the existing shape, and just draw a little circle shape right over his the front of him, and just place that there. I'm going to name this object Hungry Hero. Oh, this is a warning because... I named the image on the first level Hungry Hero. So let me change this object actually to Hungry Hero um, Welcome. And I'll go back to level one and try again Hungry Hero. All right. Now I want to set up the animations for this Hungry Hero character. And if I go to the Sprite Sheet Renderer, you, you can see you can scrub through the frames. Now we want to add a component that's going to control these frames and animate it at a certain frame rate. So I'm going to add a Sprite Sheet Renderer controller. Or it's just called a Sprite Sheet Controller. And I'm going to name it Hero Animations. And I want to have two animations in here. I want a flying animation and a hurt animation. Now the flying animation needs to be default. And I'm going to use the sprite sheet that is on here. And the flying animation goes from frame 3 to frame 22 and this is why it's important to set up your sprite sheet uh, frames in sequence um, by naming them correctly so when you when you package them together in texture packer you can um, have them all laid out linearly and and you can specify them here and I'll leave the I'll actually put the frame rate to say 50 frames per second the hurt animation is just frame uh, I believe it's frame three. So we'll just freeze it at frame three. And I want this controller to control the sprite sheet renderer. Now if I play this, I should see the default flying animation. I'll also turn off loop for the herd animation. I just want the flying animation to loop. I will also add a data component to this as well to store some properties on it. I'm going to call it properties.
if you think about the Hungry Hero character, it's only going to be in about three or four states. So we want to also have a state machine or a local, kind of a local state machine on this Hungry Hero entity so that it can manage what's going on with the character, whether it, it, it hit an obstacle and it got hurt or whether it... Um, it uh, is reset after after the uh, the hurt delay has finished and it and it's back to flying or whether it's the the character has died. So I'm gonna add a state machine to this as well. I'm gonna call it Hero State. We're gonna add a couple. A flying state. a flying reset state I gotta click out of it first flying reset a hurt state and a dead state and the default state is going to be flying the flying reset state is just a transitional state so we're gonna have this auto tra um, transition to the flying state and like we did with the global state machine while the game is running and while this character is flying we want to set up a property transition to check the current lives of the hero now I could have set up these properties like live score and distance on a global on the global object but I just decided to put them put them right here on the actual um, text object. When the hero lives equals one, we want to transition from flying to a dead dead state because the game's going to be over.